Xinjiu City volunteers host a Buddha Day ceremony at a recycling station. Guangzhou City volunteers take on the responsibility to send protective items to countries in need. To die headlines and make it say thank you for joining us. May is a month of gratitude that city volunteers in Xinju chose to host the Buddha Day ceremony in Chenjia Recycling Station. The ceremony kept pandemic prevention majors with asking people to stay within social distance guidelines, registering people's attendance, as well as wearing masks and measuring body temperatures. Before the Buddha's altar, volunteers have their palms together and bow in respect. The ceremony is simple but full of meaning and well wishes. I want the pandemic to pass so the world can return to normal. My mother-in-law's health hasn't been so good lately, and I'm here today at the Buddha Day ceremony, so I made a wish for her health to get better. The Qinjia Recycling Station, located underneath an overpass, is cool and airy. Thus, as long as people keep social distance from one another and protect themselves with masks, they are less likely to worry about the virus. We are still doing prevention measures. We have maintained social distance and registered each attendant. They have their body temperature measured and wear masks. Besides the ceremony, volunteers also promote vegetarianism by giving participants discount vouchers especially to the young people. We are promoting positively and have partnered with these businesses. We have worked up a map of vegetarian restaurants, and the young people can just scan this QR code to find where their nearest vegetarian restaurant is. May is a month for filial piety, and here at the recycling station, it's always a good time to cleanse your soul as well as keep the planet clean. In 2015, the Formosa Fun Coast water park explosion caused a great furor to society. At that time, a total of 12 injured patients were admitted to Taipei City Hospital. One of them is Dian Dian, who had to rely on an EMCO machine for a while to maintain her life. Fortunately, the medical team worked very hard to rescue her, and she is now starting a new life. When I'm holding her, I brought pencils and I brought trimming scissors, and these are microblading needles. Wearing a mask, Dian Dian is introducing the tools in a beauty box. She's learning beauty related skills. With drawn eyes and tall nose, she is a bright girl in everyone's eyes. However, when looking closer, you will find a large scarring on her arms. In a short time, 12 patients who were burned in the Formosa Fun Coast water park explosion were sent to the emergency room of Taipei Chichi Hospital. For nearly four months from that moment on, the medical team did their best to give these young knives the best care every day. At that time, 65% of her whole body was burned. She experienced the difficult process of living with ECMO, kidney dialysis, skin graving, and dressing change. Fortunately, with the efforts of the medical team, she was finally discharged after 125 days. Thank the medical team for not giving up saving me. They have provided me with the best medical treatment. Thank you, everyone. Find out the starting endpoints of her eyebrow, then you can draw the golden ratio of eyebrows. After discharging from the hospital, Dian Dian worked hard to do the rehabilitation, trying to recover from the pain of the dust explosion. Now, she is practicing conquering her mother's eyebrows to help her start a new chapter of her life. I wish to have my own workshop which can be lent to others or used by myself. Although the explosion has cast a shadow on her colorful youth, with the love from the medical team and volunteers, her life is full of hope again. I'm really grateful to the people who helped us in Tsuji Hospital. Thank you to the medical team, my family, my friends who have accompanied me all this time. How much water do you drink a day? Family medical doctors recommended a person weighing 60 kilograms should drink 1,800 to 2,400 cc of water each day. Some foreign studies have pointed out that drinking too much or too little water will affect cognition and even lead to dementia. Let's hear what doctors think of this. 
Fitness instructor Jacko needs to deal with administrative paperwork every day, and despite the static nature of this work, he doesn't forget to have a water bottle by his side so he can drink at any time. You shouldn't wait until you are thirsty to drink. It should be from time to time. Probably when I think about it, I'll pick up the bottle and have a drink. In addition to paperwork and coaching students, fitness instructors also need to do their own training. At this time, water intake is even more important. His experience is that drinking too little water leads to slower reactions. If you drink too little water, your body's concentration of blood will increase. After flowing to the brain, if your blood flow rate may become slower because of the thicker blood and make you think slower or a bit duller. Studies abroad have pointed out that drinking too little water or too much water may affect cognition and even lead to dementia. Is this true? We can't say directly that drinking less will affect dementia, but it does have an effect on the function of the brain. The biggest impact is the blood flow to the brain, especially in the case of stroke. As for drinking too much water, it is thought to affect intelligence. Excessive water intake can lead to poor metabolism in kidney patients, but it still needs to be studied. Physicians recommend basic daily water intake be calculated based upon body weight. We can multiply our weight by about 30 to 40 percent. So if you are 60 kilograms, you should probably drink about 1,800 cc to 2,400 cc. While the impact of water on intelligence can be debated, most agree that it is important to drink water in moderation. Patients with heart conditions, liver cirrhosis, kidney disease should pay special attention to avoid excessive water intake, which can worsen their metabolism. In recent years, there have been many cases of homicides carried out by individuals with psychiatric conditions. Reporting from the media has exacerbated the fears of the public equating the mentally disabled with aggressive behavior. In fact, surveys show that incidence of violence associated with the mentally handicapped is far lower than that of the general public. However, the stigma that surrounds them is different to shake yet another obstacle these individuals need to overcome. The media often use such horrible incidents to show to the public to make them judge others. One perpetrator suffers from mental illness, but the media may affix the label of mentally impaired to draw a clear distinction between ordinary people. The proportion of crimes associated with the handicap is actually much lower than the average person. However, the media continuously reports this furthering and deepening the stereotype in society. It is common in our society to be beaten by normal people. We seem to be used to it. But as long as a mental patient hurts someone in the community, they seem to want to use this to expose it as a dangerous situation. Community residents block it and prevented us from going in and out. On the wall, they oppose property rights disputes prohibiting entry and exit. We think it is discrimination against people with physical and mental disabilities. Local residents have long objected to this group home, delaying its opening for one year. We walked into the home and saw the environment especially designed for the handicap. It's actually quite beautiful. People with mental illness who work during the day come back here at night. They are all asked to rely upon themselves for daily care. It is very homey here and there's a very cozy atmosphere. Everyone here gets along like their sisters. Ordinary people, including journalists, have stereotypes about what people with mental disabilities are like. This mentally ill person, Zhang Xiaodi, was sweeping the floor. During the reporter's interview, the reporter accidentally stepped on paper scraps that were being swept, leading to his dissatisfaction. Zhang Xiaodi pumped his fist and glared at the reporter many times, even making a low murmur or scowl. These moves were a little suspicious, and the social worker had to be called upon for help. After some communication with this mentally challenged individual, we learned that there may be some negative stigma of these individuals as they may simply think a little differently than us. Later, Saudi picked up the broom and happily went off to sweep the floor. When you enter their mind and try to understand something with empathy from their perspective, you'll begin to deal with things differently. Giving mentally handicapped people a chance to clarify their actions is something that domestic media may omit in their reporting. 
The handling of negative news of people with disabilities is discussed and it must fall within the scope of the Mental Health Act. We have a concept that news should not discriminate nor single out persons with disabilities. In 2008, after the implementation of the Mental Health Act in Taiwan, the media must follow guidelines and news reports, should not use language that discriminates in labeling language, nor can they use their image to cause misunderstanding by the audience. Most of his psychiatric patients are actually not harmful. They are just treated abnormally by ordinary people because of their hallucinations and delusions. This is unfair to them. Being different is a sort of shame and shackles that we put on the mentally ill. Today, one person with a mental disability took the initiative to move forward and present this reporter in artwork. <laughs> Sharing in good faith, this person easily befriended this reporter. Everyone should have empathy, respect, and friendship for mentally challenged people. I think we are improving in this area. In fact, the most beautiful part of Taiwan is the people. I think Taiwan's media culture is gradually improving. In China, volunteers in Guangdong's Guangzhou has become more busy since April. They've been transferring items to countries like Sudan, Lesotho, and Sri Lanka. This is just a transfer point, but city volunteers seize the chance to find blessings in the details. I'm so happy I have the chance to offer my service because these ventilators can be sent to the front lines to help someone. When I was handling the supplies earlier, I just had to say a phrase of blessing. As I said, I'm a tofu. It made me so happy that these medical supplies can help protect people. Guangzhou's Tianhe Ciji volunteers have since April of this year been the standby team in helping transfer supplies. This shipment was going to leave from Shanghai to different countries, but some countries are not accepting shipments from Shanghai, for example, South Sudan, Iraq, and many of the South African countries, and African countries. So we thought it can be transferred here to Guangzhou from Shanghai. I finish my home responsibility and then I come here. It's like being on a standby because the shipment arrival time isn't so on time. Sometimes it's delayed and sometimes it's ahead of schedule. As the custom stickers needed updating, the volunteers carefully removed the old to adhere the new. This shipment was going out earlier, but the custom information wasn't as complete as now. For example, the origin of manufacturer and manufacturing badge number needs to be more clear, so we needed new stickers. In the beginning, I didn't think to ask my daughter to come, but later I thought she should come help. It's one more pair of hands. How are you feeling? Like Keeping the heart of Dharma joy to help, it can be ensured that the people who use these protective supplies are filled with blessings as well. Since he donated more than 7,000 pieces of epidemic prevention supplies to two public hospitals treating COVID-19 on Boho Island in the Philippines, to the camera, the governor of Boho Island thanked Master Jing Yan again. Boxes of supplies were sent to the public hospitals in Boho, the Philippines, including N95 and medical masks, isolation guns, protective shields, and other anti-epidemic supplies. We will be able to protect ourselves from the disease, and we will be able to provide quality service to our patients. Chichi volunteers also went to another hospital responsible for treating COVID-19 patients. The governor of Boho specially came to greet them. In the past, he went to Taiwan twice as a member of congressman. Now, he specially speaks in Taiwanese to express his gratitude to Master Zhen Yan. Thank you very much that you still remember us and you are sending all of this um, uh, protective equipment for our frontliners. This is such a big help to the health workers that we call frontliners, everyone who will be able to use this personal protective equipment. The medical personnel are working hard at the front line, while Chi is providing necessary supplies at the back. 
although the difficult moment is yet to pass. Everyone unites together to get through. The Deep Foundation has mobilized overseas volunteers to gather resources from different countries and already sent them to 50 regions. Indonesian military and police force helped to deliver medical supplies to different hospitals and nursing institutions. The epidemic prevention supplies arrived in Jakarta International Airport. This is already the third batch of supplies organized by Chiji Foundation importing from China. The supplies include ventilators, protective goggles, and related medical epidemic prevention materials. This is the last batch of epidemic prevention supplies imported from China. The follow-up assistance and direction will depend on the epidemic situation and the resource requirements from all parties. Currently, Zuji Indonesia chapter also purchases epidemic prevention supplies within the country. Just like what Dharma Master Zheng Yin said in Jingse aphorism, doing good deeds is also a blessing to ourselves. I hope everyone will do their best to do good deeds. Semua kita melakukan kebajikan sesuai dengan porsi kita masing-masing. The epidemic situation has not retarded any kindness. Everyone does not hesitate to give of themselves in this critical moment. Gathers the greatest love together. Supporting frontline medical staff, Saji volunteers in California travel around to distribute epidemic prevention supplies, including masks and protective gowns. In time, they also send fresh food to family centers, housing women and children suffering domestic violence. Knowing that they can get epidemic prevention supplies, Nina and her husband Michael drive here to get the supplies quickly. Even if they don't have masks, they are still thinking about their friends who are in hospitals on Indian reservation in Amersana. There were several young people who work at the hospital there, and we heard that the need there for protective equipment was very dire. Where Nina got in touch with Dr. Lee, and that's what's brought all of us together. Exactly. And certainly, it's wonderful that you are donating. The husband and wife have long adopted the children of the Indian trip, and some have grown up and are working in hospitals, which worries the couple during this epidemic situation. Knowing that Chiji can assist, they are very grateful. They drove thousands of miles, insisting on delivering the supplies safely. Similarly, considering the hospital needs a lot of epidemic prevention supplies, Chiji volunteers delivered them personally. We have, we have enough equipment right now, but barely. So this is really coming at a great time for us. They are the most important frontline hospitals protecting residents. What Chiji provides is immediately useful. And in fact, uh, the Suchi Medical Foundation has done just that. And uh, it's very helpful because we can put these supplies right to use. We've got lots of donations like today. We've got many donations of masks gloves and gowns. What we need today are more gowns. Apart from hospitals, volunteers have not forgotten disadvantaged groups that have long been cared for. The family center that houses Asian Pacific women and children suffering from domestic violence lacks food. Two large trucks of fresh fruits and vegetables were sent to the center. They don't have much of anything, especially right now they're not able to get jobs. Uh, they're not able to work, uh, and the kids are out of school. The Taiwan Center of Greater Los Angeles also received these supplies. At the time when the Taiwanese folks needed the most, my two best friends took initiative to help us touches me a lot. In the present crisis, people can feel the warmth of the world. In the United States, the amount of Tiji volunteers provided vegetarian lunches to the hospitals. During the meal delivery process, the concept of vegetarianism is transmitted, which affects more medical personnel to join the ranks of being vegetarians. The vegetarian meal represents a sense of gratitude and the urgency of protecting the earth. The meal boxes was enclosed with Jin's aversion and the thank you card joined by Tiji students. Tsuji volunteers are ready to send them to the hospital. Ian, 
The medical personnel work hard. We want to use this opportunity to serve them meals. Last week, we wrote to several hospitals asking if they would like us to provide them with vegetarian meal boxes. Garfield Medical Center wrote back welcoming us, so here we are. <laughs> During the pandemic period, the warmth can be expressed to the medical personnel without shaking hands to greet. And when we get this type of uh, recognition from the community, mm -hmm. it makes the employees be inspired and have more love for the patients, so it works. Volunteers use delicious food to boost the moral of the medical staff, and other hospitals are no exception. Thank you very much for providing this vegetarian lunch. It looks really delicious. I hope our nurses will enjoy it. But when they want to eat, they all need to take off protective clothing and then put it on again. But I think their hearts are very warm. We hope that the angels in white can turn the warmth they receive into action and start from one vegetarian meal a month to later influencing more people to join. The plastic cover outside the guava help to protect the fruit, but many people don't know that this cover can all be recycled. Here we meet some recycling volunteers and they will show us how to organize these plastic bags. I always thought that it was just garbage and I thought it can only be used once, so I littered it after using it. Students have changed their old mindset after going to Zhongang Recycling Station. These plastic covers used to protect fruits can all be recycled and reused again. We got a chance to connect with the food stores, and two food stores got about 10 bags a day. Think about it, 350 days a year will be about 3,000 bags. In the past, they were all burned. Shake it and loose it up, and then dry them there. We only give to vendors after air dried. It is quite complicated for a fruit bag. The whole process is exhausted and complicated. Without younger volunteers to help, these recycling volunteers often hurt their back and waist. Hence, they got a new invention. This can not only air dry the plastic bags, but also clean the dirt on it. I designed this machine to ease their burden and allow them to work faster and happier. After drying by the fan, you will feel that it's transparent because it's clean now. After air drying, the bags are put under sunlight to kill bacteria. The double layer hanger created more space to place the bags, which is also a design of Taiji. We put up this kind of lights to enclose the bags. Then we started to have some light. It's like putting them on a large bed. <laughs> Bunters use wisdom to save the earth from overloaded with garbage so we can have a clean homeland. Holland Tsuji Medical Center set up a Buddha Day ceremony stage in the hospital so the public can come to pray to the Buddha. Take a look and see you next time.